The armed forces of Ukraine may receive more than 60 American-made F-16 fighter bombers from Belgium, Denmark, the Netherlands and Norway this summer. This was reported by the newspaper Politico. According to the sources of the publication, Kiev demands that Washington and European countries accelerate the training program for Ukrainian pilots for the combat use of F-16 fighters. The Ukrainian authorities believe that the current pace does not allow the number of military personnel required for the armed forces to be trained. Ukraine has already notified the United States that it can send 30 pilots who are ready to immediately begin training on American territory. However, the Washington administration informed Kiev that there were not enough available places at the Arizona Air Base to receive more than 12 military personnel from Ukraine for training. At the same time, as the newspaper notes, American lawmakers are asking the executive branch to give priority attention to this issue and accept several more Ukrainian pilots for training. Nevertheless, the American government informed Ukraine that military personnel from other countries are also waiting for the opportunity to undergo training at the airbase, Washington cannot violate its obligations to them. According to the U.S. Air Force, a total of 12 Ukrainian pilots will be trained at the Arizona Air Base by the end of September. In addition to the United States, the training center in Denmark also has limited facilities and is preparing to close in November. The third training center for Ukrainian pilots, which is located in Romania, has not yet been launched. By the end of this year, it is expected to complete the training of 20 Ukrainian pilots out of 40 needed to control the F-16 squadron, consisting of 20 aircraft, Politico notes. According to the publication, with the current pace of training, Ukraine will not have enough pilots for a full-fledged squadron until the end of 2025. The armed forces of Ukraine use the Kulbakino airfield in Mykolaiv Oblast for their Barakter UAVs. The TASS has published information about this with reference to sources. Now Kulbakino airfield is used for UAVs. Yes, it's not simple, according to our agents, serious UAVs, Barakter UAVs are going up and down there, the source said. Turkish drones are designed for aerial reconnaissance and airstrikes against ground targets. When remotely controlled, they can fly up to 150 kilometers. At the end of winter this year, the head of the Turkish company Baykar, Haluk Barakter announced the start of construction of a UAV production plant near Kiev. As Ivan Konovalov, director of the Center for Strategic Conjuncture, noted in a conversation with Paragraph, the leaders of the Turkish organization do not really believe that Ukraine will retain its statehood until the nominal launch of drone production. The Ukrainian Navy received the first Turkish-made unmanned Barakter TB-2 in 2021. This Barakter TV-2 is a modernized version with a flight range of 300 km, and not 150 as the previous version. In addition, the control station can be located on ships. Barakter TV-2 attack drones are used to observe and cover the coast and waters of the Black and Azov Seas, as well as strike the enemy with high-precision weapons. In addition, they are also responsible for the guidance of our 360 Neptune anti-ship cruise missiles. U.S. President Joe Biden will meet with Volodymyr Zelensky this week in France and next week in Italy. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said this. While he's in Normandy, he'll have the opportunity to sit down with President Zelensky and have an engagement with him to talk about the state of play in Ukraine and how we can continue and deepen our support for Ukraine. He will also have an opportunity several days later to see President Zelensky again at the G7 in Italy, Sullivan added. Eighty years later, we see dictators once again attempting to challenge the order, attempting to march in Europe, Sullivan said, and that freedom-loving nations need to rally to stand against that, as we have. U.S. President Joe Biden departed for France on June 4, where he intends to participate in commemorative events marking the 80th anniversary of the D-Day in Normandy. He will also hold talks with French President Emmanuel Macron. 
The two leaders also are expected to discuss the Middle East. Biden has invested geopolitical capital in brokering a temporary ceasefire to the Israel-Hamas war that would see the release of hostages, even as he has maintained his staunch support for Israel and resisted European efforts to recognize a Palestinian state or investigate Israel over its handling of the war. Biden is scheduled to return to the United States on Sunday, but before he leaves France he's expected to stop at a cemetery where American soldiers who died in World War I are buried.